Hey friends, welcome back to Hardware Ninja. I am your host, Bytor. I want to take a moment to thank you for your time spent here. It really means a lot to the team that we are writing engaging material. If you didn't know, we have a Twitter and LinkedIn account active now. The links to them can be found in the description below. Please give us a follow and support the movement. Also, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. All right, once again, thank you for your time and for being here. Let's get started now. This next interview question is an interesting one because it merges the knowledge of op amps and capacitors. Don't worry, we are not jumping into active filters just yet. The question will go something like this. The interviewer will ask you to draw a non-inverting amplifier right off the bat. Side note here, I'm really against memorizing things because I much rather drive how they work. It keeps the brain young, you know? However, the inverting and non-inverting configurations of the amplifiers are so basic that you should be able to draw them from memory. Be sure to understand, however, how to derive their transfer functions. Let's move on. After the interviewer asks you to draw the non-inverting configuration, that person will then say, let's assume that my input is a step response. How does the output look like? This would be a good time for you to pause and see if you can answer the question. If you think you were able to answer the question with no problem and are now thinking, why am I wasting my time on this interview prep videos? Well, this is the gotten moment that I was waiting for. So, <laughs> <Got he. laughs> let me ask you the following. In your answer, did you assume that the op amp was ideal or non-ideal? I mean, you couldn't possibly answer the question without this key piece of information. Remember that interviewers are trying to understand how deep your understanding of a certain topic is. They are definitely, and I can guarantee you this, not interested in quick answers. So always, and I say this again, always state your assumptions to the interviewers. In other words, the first thing out of your mouth should have been, in order to answer this question, I will assume the op amp to be ideal. Or you could also ask the question, can I assume the op amp to be ideal? You could also state that you would like to assume the op amp to be non-ideal. But why shoot yourself in the foot like that, right? In any case, the interviewer will correct you if you are making the wrong assumptions. Let's say that the ideal assumption was in fact correct and this is an ideal amplifier. Be sure to state to the interviewer what entails to have an ideal amplifier. Let's say you mention infinite gain and infinite bandwidth and all of that good stuff. So, you tell the interviewer, and you draw it as well, that the output of course matches the input infinitely fast because the op amp is in fact ideal. Well, here's the second got him moment you probably didn't anticipate. Got him! <laughs> Without knowing the resistor values R1 and R2 and the supply's power in the op amp, you will never be able to tell if there is clipping or not. So I ask you, are we really tracking the input with a certain gain if my supplies are preventing me from doing that? The answer is no. But see, all these insignificant details tell the interviewer a lot in terms of your knowledge and how you approach problem solving. It tells them, if you don't have the necessary information, do you look for those answers or just assume and hope for the best? So be sure to be thorough in your thinking before answering a question that on its surface seems relatively simple. Now, let's say that you answer all these things correctly. Here's a little twist to the question. The interviewer will definitely follow up with the following. Let's assume the op amp to be ideal as you described it. What happens if we stick a really large capacitor at the output and give it the same input response? Pause here and see if you can answer the question. Many people get confused when they see large capacitors at the output of these problems. Why? Because we are thought to think that capacitors slow or smooth things down, which, in theory, it is not incorrect. However, our amplifier in this case is ideal, so if you change your answer and said anything else but it tracks the input infinitely fast as before, with a gain of 1 plus R2 over R1, with a maximum voltage of BCC, then you would be mistaken. 
But let's add even a little bit more of a twist here and let me give you a chance to vindicate yourself in the off case that you got the answers wrong. Now, I'm the interviewer and further follow up with the question. Let's say that I found an op amp that does in fact have infinite gain and infinite bandwidth. Unfortunately, this is where my idealities end. If I were to have the same non-inverting configuration with the large capacitor at the output, how does my output look to my input response? Again, pause here and see if you can answer that question. If you thought the infinite bandwidth will help you track the input infinitely fast, you would be wrong. Let's take a step back and recall how capacitors are charged. We know that capacitors are actually charged by current, not by voltage. Where is the current that charges the capacitor coming from? It's apparent that the current should be coming from the supply power in the op amp. But the maximum amount of current in a given time that an op amp can supply to the output is dictated by its slew rate. I mentioned that idealities ended with infinite gain and infinite bandwidth. That means we do have a limited slew rate. In other words, we are limiting how fast we can charge that capacitor. So your answer to the question should be the following. Given that idealities end with gain and bandwidth, that means factors like slew rate are non-ideal or limited. In order to track the input, we need to charge the capacitor. And for this, we need current. In order to track the input infinitely fast, we need an infinite amount of current in an infinitesimally small amount of time. That translates into infinite slew rate. Therefore, the output waveform will look something like this, where the slope of the voltage across the capacitor is directly proportional to the amount of slew rate. A higher slew rate means a steeper slope, and the opposite is also true, meaning a slower slew rate will charge the capacitor slower. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you very much for sticking to the end. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and I will see you sometime next week. We also encourage you to share any potential feedback to make these videos more engaging. Also, if you have gone to recent interviews and have questions that you didn't know the answers to, please submit them down here. We will be glad to be making a video about them. We're looking forward for you to become a hardware ninja and ace your interviews.